Hello everyone, welcome to Switch Up, my name is Glenn and today we're going to have a look for you at some of the upcoming games for this next week. Now by the time you see this video, Assassin's Creed Black Flag would have just come out, so we're going from Saturday the 7th up to the following Friday. This week seems to be a mixture of ports, one of which obviously being Assassin's Creed, a few interesting looking indies, and a couple of highly anticipated, I would say, games as well. So with all that said, let's have a look. First up then, and releasing on the 10th of December, we have Call of Juarez Gunslinger. Now this is, I believe, the fourth in the Call of Juarez series, and was originally on Xbox 360 and PS3 via their digital stores. This is a first person shooter set in the Wild West and its core gameplay elements include bullet time and gunslinger duels. The story sees you searching for and hunting down real life infamous gunslingers such as Billy the Kid and Jesse James and has been enhanced for the Switch with the inclusion of motion controls and by that I assume they mean gyro aiming and HD rumble. Now, as far as I know, this doesn't have a physical release as it stands at the minute, which is unfortunate and may well put some people off picking it up, which would be a shame. Call of War as Gunslinger. Coming to y'all, Nintendo Switch. Also on the 10th, then we have two games that I'm pretty sure are highly anticipated, and that's Shovel Knight King of Cards and Shovel Knight Showdown. Now I think I'm right in saying that these are the last two expansions to the original Shovel Knight that were part of the stretch goals when the original game was made. I'm not sure if I'm completely right there. If someone wants to clarify then please do stick it in the comments below. Anyway, King of Cards sees you take on the role of King Knight and is a prequel to the original game, showing you the events that led up to King Knight taking the throne at Pridemore. Shovel Knight Showdown, on the other hand, looks to be a completely different game entirely to the other Shovel Knight expansions, more akin to a Super Smash Bros. type experience, with you choosing from all of the characters from the series so far. These games cost £7.99 each, or your regional equivalents, which would have been on the screen by now, but they will be available to you as free download if you've already bought the Shovel Knight Treasure Trove collection. Next up then we have Riverbond, which says it's a 1-4 player couch co-op adventure game which uses voxel graphics. Now I'm not the biggest fan of voxel graphics, I've said that a few times in the past. I'll give the game its due going off of the screenshots on the eShop, it certainly looks very colourful and one of the bosses actually looks pretty impressive in that voxel form. There isn't a trailer so I can't see how it looks on the eShop itself but I would assume it's some sort of dungeon crawler based on what I've seen. It promises drop-in, drop-out couch co-op with a variety of weapons to choose from to suit everybody's playstyle, and it's going for £17.99 or again your regional equivalent, I'm assuming it'll be about $19.99, Euros but the prices will be on the screen. Next we have Fishing Barents Sea Complete Edition, which is a simulation game where you take to the Norwegian seas in search of the best fishing zones, starting out with a small boat that you inherited from your grandfather and earning money from the fish you catch to upgrade and buy bigger and better boats. Now there are a fair few simulation games on the Switch so far for a variety of different pastimes and again this one may well find its audience. One thing I will say from watching the trailer is the water physics don't look fantastic with the boats looking like they're virtually gliding on top but if that doesn't affect the gameplay too much you may well be able to look past this and enjoy the wealth of content that the game has on offer. It does say that 20 years of weather data has been used to recreate the environment in a realistic fashion, so hopefully that issue that I spotted in the trailer is more of a cosmetic one than anything else. 
Next up is a very interesting looking game called Jamestown Plus. Now this takes the famous Jamestown settlement from 17th century America and moves it instead to 17th century Mars. This is a shoot 'em up with one to four players with a lovely looking pixel art style and I could see this potentially being a lot of fun with a few extra players. It has a 17% discount should you buy the game in its first week of launch. I'm certainly intrigued and this may be one to keep an eye on. Also releasing on the 12th we have Card Apocalypse. Now this is an RPG with a 90s feel to it and tells the story of a set of children who are forced to play their favourite card battling game in secret after it's banned in their school. Not long after, the mutants of the game invade the real world and the children have to stop them. You need to build your decks and battle your opponents with the first player to whittle their opponent's health down to zero being the winner. I don't know if it's like something like Steam World Heist where you obviously play through the game but then battle using your cards or whether you spend the majority of your time in battle. It's £22.49 or again your regional equivalent. It does have 20% off for the first week of its launch up to the 19th of December. Again, maybe one to keep an eye on because the trailer doesn't give too much away. Next up and again releasing on the 12th we have Gensu Skydrift. Now this is a part of the Tohu Project family, it's a spin-off of those games, which I think I'm right in saying are for the most part bullet hell shooters. This is a racing game, very much a kart racer in style, but instead of racing in a kart, you race on one of your friend's backs. It looks ludicrous to be perfectly honest. I've just watched the trailer, which doesn't really show very much gameplay footage, kind of shows the camera flitting from in front to behind the character as they float along the track, but from what it does show, the backgrounds look bland, the crowd that are cheering you on from the sides look terrible. This really does not look very good at all. Next we have Super Epic The Entertainment War, which takes place in a not too distant dystopian future, where video games are no more. Society is under the control of a dictatorship and it's up to you, a rebellious raccoon, and your trusty llama steed to save the day. This is a platform game where you play as the aforementioned raccoon and again it uses a 16-bit-ish art style. The trailer is full of funny moments, it looks like you have a stop sign as your weapon and there seems to be plenty of quirky humour in there as well. As long as they've remembered to make a decent game amongst all the hilarity, then this could be pretty decent. The final game coming out on the 12th is BQM or Block Quest Maker Complete Edition. So this game is already out on the Switch but this as I said is the Complete Edition which comes with two DLC packs being the Samurai Era and Cyber Century. Now in this game you can create your own dungeon RPG or attempt to take on any of the maps that have been created by other users. It says there are over 500 assets to use whilst creating your dungeons and whilst this is not my cup of tea, I'm not creative enough for games like this, it may well be fun for people who enjoy such titles.
coming out on the 13th is Dead End Job, which again has a 15% pre-order discount for the first week of its release. This is a couch co-op twin stick shooter which sees you working for Ghoul Be Gone, the number one expert in paranormal pest control. Again, it has drop-in drop-out co-op or you can play by yourself, of course, to try and defeat all of the ghosts. Now, the blurb on the eShop makes a point of saying how much the creators loved 90s cartoons with its, and I quote, stretchy, squishy, gross-out laughs. So expect plenty of toilet humour, I think it's safe to say, in this one. Maybe a game for a bit of a laugh with family after your Christmas dinner. The final game for this next week then is Event Horizon Space Defense. Now this says it is actually set in the Event Horizon universe. Obviously the film came out in 1997 and starred Sam Neill and Lawrence Fishburne I think amongst others. And it looks like this license isn't too hard to acquire these days. Now I'll be honest when I first saw the screenshots for this game I was really intrigued as it looks like you have some sort of spaceship building element to it. And at first glance it reminded me of one of my favourite DS games, a game called Infinite Space by Sega. Having just watched the trailer, I'm not quite sure how much it's like that game now. There is the spaceship building aspect, but it looks like after that it's more of a shooter as opposed to the real time RPG that that game was. At £6.29 and with the promise of infinite gameplay, as you get stronger so do your enemies apparently, it could be worth a punt and that ship building aspect certainly does interest me a little I must say. So that's it then for the upcoming week. A couple of decent games, some that look quite intriguing but nothing absolutely mind blowing. Unless of course we get a few stealth drops which do seem to be happening more frequently these days. Anyway a quick thank you to our Patreons for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care and until next time, happy gaming.